Yeah, yeah. Come back this way now. Come back to me. Yep. Come my way. Come to me. Yep, 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 yep. All right, straighten up. Don't hit this. What? Straighten up. Don't hit this. Come on up a little further. Go that. I don't. Don't hit this. Just go that way a little bit with it. Come on forward. All right, that's good for now. Neutral. Yeah, turn it off. Welcome again, everyone. Tonight, we are back to work on this here, what did I call this last time? Utility gooseneck, I believe. I can't exactly remember, but um, last time you saw it, I did not have these here gussets put in place. Uh, I did these without picking up the camera, so didn't get too much done other than, um, again, obviously I put the gussets on here, added some bracing. I was thinking that I was gonna add some, some bracing to the outside here, but I didn't see it was necessary really because we're only a 12 foot trailer essentially. So I didn't think it was, it was too bad. Again, it's pretty stable as is. Um, but a couple things that we need to do this thing here before we can call it, I guess, roadworthy is We've, we need to add a bumper to the back end, um, bumper and tail lights, and then maybe a few other miscellaneous things, possibly some mud flaps. Um, but first order of business tonight is uh, I'm going to be cutting this here bumper off. This I bought this frame for another project, possibly for the uh, international project as a little future tidbit, but it came with this nice big beefy bumper. So we're gonna take this, cut this off of here and uh mounted up the trailer and then i haven't decided if we're gonna cut light i'm probably not gonna cut lights in here probably add lights on top not really sure yet but i have a couple lights for it run some wiring and we'll go from there so other than my hair being a total uh total mess this evening um we've got some uh some new blood to the channel we've got this is doug he's been uh we've been I want to say it was like third or fourth grade since um, we've known each other. And uh, he lived out in California for a while and then to Reno and then moved back here. So he's wanting to pick up on some welding and yeah, miscellaneous I'm stuff. I'm going to teach Jesse a thing or two so you guys will get some premium content. And you'll come to find out that Doug um, does not weld at all. So we're going to be getting we're going to be getting him rigged up here to... Try to cut this bumper off how I wanted to cut it off with a torch, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna be introducing him into welding, and we're gonna more or less teach him try to teach him a thing or two, and we'll see how that goes. So, with all that being said, I'm gonna stop talking. We're gonna get to work. We're gonna cut that off, and then uh, I'm not sure what this evening will bring, but that's that's the game plan. So, let's get to work. How are we looking? Prime time, baby. Let's get it. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna do a little. Uh, since Doug has, have you used a torch before? I have not used a torch. Okay, so we're gonna do a little uh, crash course tutorial for those who may be using the torch for the first time, but you gotta turn the bottles on first. So we've got our bottles turned on. Uh, I run my pressures on the acetylene. I run about seven to eight PSI on that, and then anywhere from like 40 to 60, depending on what I'm cutting on the oxygen. Um, I've got quite a bit of hose, so we're going to go ahead and crack our acetylene and we're going to purge out the oxygen and hold down the lever. Okay. <clears throat> You're paying attention to here, right, Doug? I'm trying to. Okay. So we've got our fuel. We've got our oxygen. We, we're going to crack our fuel once we've got it purged out. Okay. We're going to go ahead and light that. Now, you don't want too little. This is too little. There's a lot of soot in that. You want to get that out there a little more. Too little what? There's too little flame. So, okay, we're getting a lot of soot. We want to clean that soot up a little bit. There's really, there's many ways to do this, but what we're trying to accomplish here is we're trying to get rid of most of that soot. The camera can pick that up. And then we're gonna bring our oxygen in and we're gonna bring it, we want to get to a neutral flame. So this here, the longer feather, that's, we're, we're in a, uh, a carburizing flame still. So we want to get to a neutral flame. We've got a carburizing flame right now. 
I know I'm saying a lot of words that may or may not make sense, but we want to get that to a neutral flame. If the camera can pick it up, when that feather that's sticking out here goes away, we know that we're almost to a neutral flame, but we've got to hit our oxygen because when I hit the, uh, the cutting or cutting stream, it's going to bring that feather back some. Again, this is all provided that the camera is picking up what we're seeing here. But we want to hit our stream and then bring our feather just to where it's a neutral flame. But just when it goes away, we know we're set right. If you go too much the other way, we create an oxidizing flame, which they both have their purposes. Oxidizing, it burns uh, much hotter, whereas like you're cutting through a bunch of rust, you might want more of a, uh, an oxidizing flame. But I'm gonna show Doug here how to cut a little bit, and then uh, we're gonna turn it over to him. Our frame rails on the, on the bed are 34 inches, roughly to the outside, and I've got 37 to here. And I need, I need to keep, um, I wanna cut this off, I don't want that, so it's gonna be kind of weird. We're gonna cut it kind of on the seam. This plate here goes back into the, behind the channel. I wanna keep this because it's attached to, you can see, it's attached to the two inch receiver over here. So we're gonna kind of cut on an angle just to get this thing whacked off here and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do with it then. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of preheat the whole thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on my stream, we're not cutting yet. I'm just gonna try to burn off some of this paint. And then I'm just gonna wait, let this thing get kind of cherry. We're, we're watching for, um, we want to see the metal kind of start to sweat. And we know we're about ready. We want to get somewhat cherry red. More like an orange, but cherry red sounds cooler. All right, so we're about, we're about ready. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring up. I'm going to ease in, see how it's, it's wanting to take over. Yeah, there it's kind of, yeah. we're cutting through heavy, thick stuff, so. And once you get it going, it should stay going. But you're just going to follow that, that bead right down the center, nice and slow. Turn it off, you can really do either. I uh, most time turn the acetylene off, shut the oxygen off, and then you're basically done. Oh, baby! <laughs> Come on now. All right, Doug, how, how would you attack this? How, how, we need to get this from here to there. Of course. What, what would you do? What do you mean? <laughs> what, would, what would you do? Well, you know, really what you gotta do is you gotta cut this down to 34, old buddy. Okay, then what? You gotta cut both sides, then we're gonna weld some channel on there. And All right, we'll weld, you're, learning, you're learning the lingo already. We're gonna weld it outside, right? Yep, what's, what's that called? What, this? Yep, no, no, no. You got channel right, but what's that? This? Yeah. That's your, uh, that's your freaking extender down there. <laughs> It was a trick question. That's also a channel. Yeah, it's a channel. <laughs> You're just channeling everything together. Uh, yep. <laughs> All right, so the plan here is um, we need to be at 34 to the outside, so we've got 37 and a quarter-ish. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and chop, um, chop this plate, and then we're going to cut this back section here to 34 overall, cut this side off, and then we're going to have a couple pieces of channel that we're going to weld there at 34 to the inside so that way when we come over here it'll basically come up each side of that and that's how we're going to attach it that way we can get our we can get our bracing um, to stiffen this up and then also get our drop down um, and we're going to I'm I'm not too sure on the specifics but we're going to go with 
uh, 16 inches off the ground. That's where we're going to put the bumper. Um, and then we're going to figure out how to get some lights in here. So, Doug, would you like to cut this or are you still on the fence about it? it don't matter to me, man. Let's right. get after it. So, tell me what, what's half of 75? Uh, 37 and a half. Okay. What's, what's, uh, 34 divided by 2? 17. You sure? Yep. Oh. All right. I'm gonna. This is how you're gonna top the bottom, okay? Gonna get that hot. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna haul it on. That's all you gotta do, okay? Yes, sir. Nice and easy, slow, steady. So smooth and smooth and fast. There you go. So it can drop it up. Heat up the whole thing or just the top where you're gonna start? Wherever, whatever you wanna do, buddy. Any point to what I'm doing right now? Yep, yep, preheating. Just so we're clear, this is gonna be your first ever, first ever uh, torch cut by my uh, my buddy here. Not yet, not yet. Yep, yep. hold her down. All that line. You might have just maybe the line disappear a little bit. You can't see the line. Yeah, you preheated over there some dirt there, and I, I try to keep it as crazy as you can. You're doing good. A little bit closer. Yeah. You're getting further and further away. Man, get, get closer. There you go. Closer, closer. There you go. Slow down a little bit. Okay. I couldn't see the line. Yeah. Hammer. So, turn, turn your, turn your fuel, close it. Yep, and then right here. Yep. All right. <clears throat> How crooked was that dang line? It actually don't look too bad. What uh, what what are we what are we rating them in the uh, in the comments? What are we rating them? <laughs> <laughs> I give them uh for look honestly. This is his first first time ever cutting a piece of metal, and uh, I give him a pretty high score for all things considered. So we're gonna cut a couple pieces of channel. Um, we may or may not clean this up totally. We may just weld right to right to it. It's not really that important, um, and uh, go from there. <laughs> I got so scared, it started shooting flames at me. Last night we finished putting this here bumper in place. Uh, just finished welding it out and we got a couple things to add yet back here. Um, this bumper is pretty pretty stout so I didn't want to cut into that and try to put some lights in it. So I need to thank our good buddy Ethan for, uh, I think I've been holding on to these for about five years now, uh, waiting on a project to 
use them on, I guess. And we're trying to keep it simple. As our old, uh, old buddy JC Smith says, simple is reliable. We're gonna keep it simple. And uh, I'm gonna put these here, one on each side there, and then uh, run some wiring back to here. And then we only have a few things left to, to do on this here before it's usable. Um, I got some chains to weld on the front and I'm gonna, I got some of these tabs here that we used on the other trailer project for to more or less a waste, way to secure my, uh, the wiring and such. So rather than paint this thing right now, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna either use something like uh, linseed oil or something similar and uh, just protect it for now because inevitably I'm gonna wanna change something on it or modify it. I still need to build a, um, a support back here so that we can haul metal on the top of this thing if we need to kind of a transport slash welding rig whatever it needs to be a utility trailer i think that's what i called it um so i think i'm going to do that just to leave it as is just uh protect it somewhat with the linseed oil and i'm going to try to like i'll probably try to spray that on i don't know if you can uh thin it out or not but try to just use a uh, give it a good pressure washing and then just spray that on there i don't know if that'll be in this video or not but we're almost done with the uh, usability part of it so i'm gonna go ahead and weld these couple things on start running some wiring get the lights put in it and uh we'll see we'll see what we get if we wrap it up in this uh this evening or if we if i decide to put it all together we'll see All right, we're gonna paint this today, and by paint, I mean we're gonna use this stuff here. Um, Penetrol, find this at Lowe's, uh, Home Depot, I believe, but it's a, um, basically like a clear coat we're gonna be putting on it, and it says up here, uh, conditioning bare rusted metal, gives you directions if you can read that. Um, but I've not used this personally. I have uh, had several people I know that have used it on stuff and uh, more or less recommended it, so. Um, but yeah, it's basically like a lin you know, linseed oil or something similar where you're just protecting what's already here. And as I mentioned earlier, I believe that inevitably I'm going to be ch changing some stuff on this trailer, whether that be, uh, modifying stuff up here or what have you. Um, so I don't want to paint it just yet and then have to grind down paint and fix stuff. So that's what we're doing. Um, took the liberty of pressure washing it. I was going to use um, some Osfo to kind of neutralize the rust, but I don't really care at this point. Uh, we're just gonna get this done. And we're gonna be using this here. It's probably, this is a 1.4. It's probably a little large for um, this stuff. And we're just gonna see how it works out. You can you can just use this, you can brush it on because the back says here, um, for conditioning bare rusted metal, remove loose rust, excess dirt, oil, grease, be sure surface is dry, and then saturate the metal with Penetrol allowed. 12 to 24 hours for drying um you don't you don't have to it's basically you just soak a rag in it and you can you can wipe it down you can use it to wipe it but because i want to get all up underneath of the this here also uh, i'm going to be using this and if you are in the market for spray gun um there's a discount code It'll be in the uh, description if you want to check those out so let's get started 
and we're gonna be probably be wrapping up uh, here pretty soon with this video and move on to the next project Well, that's going to wrap up this uh, part two. I think it's part two of this here utility gooseneck build, if you want to call it that. And uh, as you can see, this is one of the other reasons why I made a gooseneck um, to, so I could haul, haul it behind my work truck here. And aside from the uh, runs, which that was a given, but the love bugs managed to find it. Um, it's already pretty pretty dry, so they should come out um, once, uh, once everything's nice and... Uh, dried up overall i'm happy with it should uh should come in handy um next thing i got to do is build like a little um little rack back here on the back so that we can haul our uh, our material up top it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a minute before i do that thanks for watching everyone we'll see you all in the next video thanks guys